one other thing I want to draw attention to is the fact that every time there was a an act of violence, whether it was in Europe or here in the United States, before we could get the details over who committed that act of violence, Donald Trump would very publicly pin it on Muslims, okay? This is radical Islamic extremism, this is terrorism. And I just want you to remember that as you watch this next clip. The media is putting all the blame on the right and the president's supporters. Well, you're right, they immediately politicize everything. They do something else, they insert themselves. I must speak, I must say something. No, you don't, you can actually shut up and pray for people and wait for the authorities to make their judgments. Can you, okay, look, can you imagine if after 9-11, somebody came out from the government and said, why don't you just shut up and pray? No, we're not gonna go after the people who did it. We're not gonna address it, we're not even gonna condemn it. Just shut up and pray, that's all you're gonna get. Can you imagine if they did that after the Orlando shooting or after the shooting in Northern California when it's Muslims who do it? Oh my God, the Boston Marathon. Could you imagine afterwards? They're like, just shut up and pray. We're not gonna do anything about it. We're not even gonna condemn it, okay? But when it's a right winger, they're like, oh, it's so predictable that they would blame the right wing. That's because he's a right winger. And that's because every murder that in this country last year, now in New Zealand, is by right wing extremists. So the head of the Anti-Defamation League went on TV today again to say, no, Donald Trump saying white supremacy is just a small group of people is not true. It's a global terror threat. And yes, he's wrong on the facts. Every murder in this country by an extremist last year was done by a right winger. I mean, look at the, the double talk that Kellyanne Conway had in the earlier clip. No, he, he's not technically a Nazi, he's just a fascist. <laughs> Gee, I wonder where the fascists are on the political spectrum. I got news for you, they're on the right wing. What I'm also hearing this other talking point from conservative pundits, which is, oh well, this shooter was obsessed with fertility rates and how the Muslim community is having too many children. And then they tried to make it seem as though that's a concern or a worry coming from the left wing. No, no, that's a concern coming from conservatives over and over again. That's all we hear about. We gotta keep the Muslims out. We shouldn't be we shouldn't be having other people's babies. Who said that? Steve King, I believe he's in the right wing. He's a Republican right. congressman, he's still in Congress. And he said we can't, something along the lines that we can't rescue our civilization with other people's babies. Right. Yeah. So you need to increase the baby count on the white side, but definitely not on the Muslim side. He went and murdered 49 Muslims. Where's the conversation about whether the guy is a right winger or a left winger? I mean, this is why the mainstream media greatly frustrates progressives. And the idea that they are liberal is preposterous, absurd, insane, okay? There isn't anything that they would do a false neutrality on, a false equivalency on. Say, so, well, I mean, there's a fascist who murdered all the Muslims, but Kellyanne Conway says he might be a liberal fascist. Let's have a debate. Because we need the ratings and I have to call everything even. So I'll bring in a Trump person and a non-Trump person and they'll have a nonsense debate and then we'll call it even. It's insane. So uh, let's get to Kellyanne Conway's final talking point, which has to do with what she claims the conservatives are you know, too high class to ever get engaged in. And then we're gonna prove her wrong, take a look. Look, uh, someone like me who, uh, reflecting on the first year of our time in the White House here at the end of 2017, was asked, what was the worst day there? And I know the person in the media was expecting me to say something else. And I said, the worst day, bar none, was the day C. Scalise almost lost his life on that ball mm-hmm. field in Arlington, Virginia. And thank, and thank God he didn't. Um, but. We didn't run around saying, gee, the guy said he watches MSNBC or he's a Bernie supporter. Nobody should do that. Nobody should blame folks other than the evil, hateful shooter. Oh, okay. So Kellyanne Conway claims that after uh, the attempt to shoot and kill uh, Steve Scalise, that you know she didn't try to pin it on the left wing. You know they were much better than that. She said nobody did. Nobody, nobody did. on the right, right wing did. Okay. Well, I don't know. Uh, we have receipts. Let's take a look. As C. Scalise was fighting for his life and crawling into right field in a trail of blood, you should go back and see what people were saying about the president and the Republicans at that very moment. It's terrible because it's, again, it's one thing to say, I disagree with you on health care repeal or on taxes or on your plan for national security. But you can't attack people personally in a way and, and think that tragedies like this won't happen. Okay, so look. 
I think we're pretty consistent. We're in the camp of rhetoric matters. So if you are incessantly demonizing one group of people, certain groups of people, and you will not let let it go. You continue doing it over and over again. You are gonna stoke fear, you are going to incite violence, which is why I think rhetoric matters and you need to be careful. But Kellyanne Conway will you know, support Donald Trump stoking tension and fear. And then she'll turn around and pretend as if he's completely innocent. And then in that video, I mean, you heard what she said. She's blaming the rhetoric of the left for encouraging someone to open fire against right wing politicians. Well, and she said it herself, but they have no remorse, they have no conscience. So she goes on TV and goes, now we never said that the left was stoking anything or that the, the, the shooter was a left winger in the Steve Scalise story. When she herself said it on air, on the same channel, on television, she doesn't care, doesn't care. Because you and I have normal human instincts like shame, guilt, you know, and joy and all the other things too. But in this case, like you'd feel a little ashamed if you so brazenly lied on national TV in a way that could be disproven so easily. But you know, a lot of times a lot of the national cable guys don't even bother disproving her. And she's right there. So she gets to lie over and over and over again. And so whenever it's an attack that they think that they could take political advantage of, they're all over it. Scalise, you're crawling in right field in blood. And it was the people on the left who were saying terrible things about Republicans. You see what happened there? Oh my God, the Muslims, every time they do attack, they're all unified. They're all part of a certain ideology. There's something we gotta do about it. We gotta take legal action. We gotta make sure that they don't come into this country. Let's polarize, let's make sure you hate the right people. When it's right wings doing it over again. No, no, just shut up and pray. Don't say anything. And my God, we would never do it. We would never do it. Thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers. But whatever you do, do not do anything about it. And then they wonder, hey, I wonder how, I wonder how it got here. Well, it got here because not only did you encourage it, as the government whose central job is to protect us, you did nothing to protect us. And now this poison has spread all across the world, including to New Zealand. Absolutely. I mean, look, dividing and conquering has been a very effective strategy for the Trump administration. He's been demagoguing and he's been spreading all sorts of nonsense about minority groups, Muslims, and it's worked out for him when it comes to getting elected and drumming up support among his base. But there are always consequences. And they don't ever want to take responsibility for those consequences. And not only is it insulting to the family members who are now grieving the loss of their loved ones as a result of this type of rhetoric, but it just also signals that there aren't, there aren't gonna be any changes in behavior or any solutions moving forward. As long as Trump is in office, as long as we have people like this running the country and saying the things they say and doing the things they do, this type of behavior will continue happening. You know, God forbid. You know, these types of terrorist attacks will continue happening, and we're not gonna have any solutions for it. They're yeah. gonna continue refusing to take any responsibility or changing their behavior. And that's the most depressing part about all of this. When Donald Trump said in his acceptance speech at the Republican National Convention, I alone can protect you. Um, I guess we all misunderstood that, and, and we knew that he was a bigot at that point for all the things he said on the campaign trail. But I still assume that he meant like, I'm a father figure that can protect the whole country. No, 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 he was apparently saying, I alone can protect you right wing white Christians. Everybody else, I'm, I'm not gonna bother to protect at all, and I'm not gonna care. When Nazis chanted blood and soil on US soil in Charlottesville, and when they said the Jews will not replace us, he said there was very fine people on that side, and they killed somebody that day. They killed somebody that day. He didn't say I alone can protect you. He said there's very fine people among the Nazi murderers. I mean, that is that should have ended his presidency. I mean, it would have ended anybody's presidency. I mean, can you imagine if Obama said there was very fine people on the side of the Nazis who killed people that day after chanting anti-Semitic chants like that, right? And no, no, the march, the the right wing band played on, and then. Synagogue is attacked, 11 people killed, doesn't protect you. Muslims attack, doesn't protect you. Right wing terrorist attack after terrorist attack, women attack in Florida, doesn't protect you. Because he didn't mean you, he meant my people. And remember what he said at the rallies, if you assault anyone on the other side, 
I'll pay your legal fees. So I'm not here to protect them. I'm only here to protect the white right wing Christians. He's a very scary guy. He's not interested in being the president in a democracy. He's interested in being an autocrat who only protects what he views as his people. This guy's a monster and he's currently in charge. Thanks for watching this free clip of the Young Turks. Don't forget to become a TYT member today. For more exclusive content, join now at tyt.com slash join.